Bonavani is uh, with us. He wants to be your next county executive. But first, there's a Democratic primary August 7. Good morning, Mark Montavani. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, your first time running as a uh, elected official, right? That's correct. Not a good time to be running as an outsider after what's transpired the last couple of days. Well, I don't know that I uh, feel particularly uh, influenced by that. Uh, that's somebody else's set of circumstances. I don't right. really think it has a lot to do with me. But. All right. Well, let me ask this question. Businessman, successful. Um, there's a lot of questions, right? Maybe vetting mm, politicians up through the ranks might not be a bad way to go about business um, because of what's transpired over the last couple of days. Why is a businessman good for – why is a politician – can be a businessman, and, and why can a businessman be a politician? Well, I think you, what, you, what you should be thinking about is what the responsibilities and duties of the job are and what kind of training uh, probably uh, uh, allows one to be effective in that job. I think the county executive's job is more in the nature of being an executive than it is being a criminal defense lawyer as a practical matter. The, the way I define the responsibilities of the county executive are to create economic opportunity in the community to uh, manage an effective government enterprise, uh, to uh, 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 manage resources effectively. Uh, I don't think those things have anything to do with being a, a good criminal defense lawyer. I think they have a heck of a lot more to do with being a CEO and having run a successful business and built it and run it. So I think it's always appropriate to consider what somebody's background is. Uh, I'm certainly willing to have my background evaluated and uh, uh, put myself out there as a candidate for this particular uh, governmental function. The argument is that the county executive really doesn't have that much power in the county. Yeah, so power is a funny thing, isn't it? Uh, uh, people can uh, create influence and garner resources across the community a variety of different ways. Uh, I am shocked at the way the county executive's role has been utilized because I think it's been so terribly underutilized as a practical matter. We have systemic issues in this country, in this county, in this region, that I don't believe the current county executive even addresses. I think that's a failure of leadership. One's power and influence doesn't only come from what the charter says the guy's supposed to be doing. It comes from convening resources. It comes from providing leadership. It comes from showing up. It comes from a whole variety of uh, aspects that make one an effective leader. You say systemic issues. What are those? systemic issues and what will you do to Look, try to fix them? St. Louis County is the center of poverty in this region, first of all. Do you guys know that 35% of the African American children who live in St. Louis County live in poverty? Mm -hmm. I don't think your average listener realizes that. And I think that's a shame, it's a crime. I don't see the county executive even deal with that kind of issue. You guys know that segregation in our community is rated as the fourth or fifth highest level of segregation in America. What has the county executive done on that issue? What has he said? Has he addressed it? The rate of economic mobility, which is the rate at which people move out of poverty in our country, is the lowest, according to the Gates Foundation, in St. Louis in the country. Right? Again, no leadership, no vision, no agenda. I think that's unacceptable, and I think it cries out for a different kind of leadership. Further, if you just uh, bear with me for a moment, uh, we are the most fragmented local government in America. Our government structure in this community is the most fragmented of any in America. Right? Our, uh, our fragmented, fractured uh, local government structure inhibits, has inhibited, us dealing with issues on a regional level. Uh, I see no particular engagement from the county executive on that issue at all. Well, what's the point of having the job if you're not going to deal with the systemic issues that face our community. Uh, are you are you referring to which was which was my question, which was the county executive doesn't have a whole lot of power because you're in charge of the unincorporated parts of St. Louis County. Uh, you brought it up, city county merger. Uh, some of these towns uh, are dissolving. See, where are you in in those big issues of the day? Well, first of all, uh, the the reference to city county merger is not appropriate, right? Mergers tend to connote commercial transactions wherein one organization acquires the other and the acquired entity goes away and the acquiring entity gets bigger and whatnot. That doesn't really even apply here. Uh, our fragmentation from a local government structure in this community is a two-headed monster. We have two major challenges 
at least. One of them is the city-county divide. The other is the multiplicity of municipalities in St. Louis County, right? With respect to the first of those issues, I am in favor of the city of St. Louis rejoining St. Louis County as the 90th city in St. Louis County. This is not revolutionary. Chicago's part of Cook County. LA's part of LA County. This is the way this ordinarily works. We're the outlier here, right? If, St. Louis, if the city of St. Louis rejoins St. Louis County, there's gross misunderstanding about what that means. Many people in the county who fear this fear it because they believe if that happens, the city's fiscal situation will somehow work to the detriment of St. Louis County. But as a practical matter, that's not really right. St. Louis County doesn't have responsibility for the fiscal situation of any of those cities. They all have their own bond rating. Florissant has its own bond rating. Kirkwood has its own bond rating. City of St. Louis joins St. Louis County. St. Louis County doesn't pick up the city's debts. That's a, that's a misnomer. Here's what it does for us, though, if the city rejoins. It allows the city to be represented on St. Louis County Council. So the St. Louis County would then have not just the million residents it has today, but a million three hundred thousand, which would be the additional three hundred thousand right. folks from the city. Right? And so the county council grows to 10 from 7 or something like that today. Uh, but for the first time in my life, we would have a legislative forum sitting to make policy for the city and county together. That's a sea change, in my opinion, with respect to the way we have conducted our business in this community. And that is only consistent with the fact that most economic opportunities today in this country are regional. The fact that Richmond Heights and Maplewood might have a dispute isn't keeping Amazon from here, from coming to St. Louis. It's not causing the MLS to not come here. The city-county divide has much more significant implications. Uh, so, so I think the city ought to rejoin. With respect to the, the municipalities, yeah. the multi, all right, I think that's a bridge too far. I don't think the people in this community are enthused about the notion of taking their local communities out of business. To the extent that some of them have fiscal challenges and they want to consolidate. I think the county government ought to support that. Right. Uh, how, do you, how do you propose going about a city, county? Um, There's a whole procedure, McGraw. Well, I mean, I mean a, a, a vote of the people, a vote of the state? Be. No, no, okay. no, not the state. We've got to make our own way here. That's crazy. Uh, the, the, the procedure is that the county executive and the mayor appoint... Uh, each nine members to what's called the Board of Electors. They used to call it Board of Freeholders. Now they call it Board of Electors. The, board, the freeholder thing was held unco unconstitutional. The governor appoints one. So those 19 people formulate a plan, and they submit it to a vote in both jurisdictions, city and county. They just have to both approve it uh, by a simple majority, and then we implement it over the course of a couple of years. This is not that tough. In a couple or three years, with a leader standing up and saying, look, we can do this, we can get it done. Um, I want to. I want to save a couple minutes for for your story. Um, but uh, your the criticism that people are seeing out there is that you supported Eric Greitens financially. Um, was that a mistake? What are your thoughts oh, sure. on? Oh, sure. Obviously, it was a mistake. Uh, he obviously turned out to be somebody who I didn't think he was. Uh, I obviously missed it. Right. I think most of us have uh, missed it on an election uh, or or two. I perceived him, according to his resume, as a guy who had been a humanitarian and a soldier and a Rhodes Scholar. These things were impressive to me. I first encountered him when he was actually being recruited by the Obama administration to run as a Democrat. Uh, you know, he came from Democratic roots, right? I thought of him as a moderate. He kept moving more and more to the right, and so from a policy standpoint, when he started cutting education uh, you know, funding and those kinds of things, I kind of felt jumped off the bandwagon, all right? And, you know, with respect to the personal issues, those are way beyond the pale of anything that anybody would have, uh, yeah. would have uh, had knowledge of. Uh, who are you? Where'd you come from? How'd you get to where you are? Uh, well, I'm just, a, I'm just a St. Louis guy, you know. I grew up in Afton, uh, middle-class uh, family, uh, parochial schools. Uh, I went to St. Louis U High, uh, uh, Quincy College. Uh, went to law school at Mizzou. Uh, then I went to business school at Pitt. Uh, I practiced law for 15 years. I had a client that uh, asked me if I would leave law practice and take over management of their business. I did so. It was a marketing services business. The company prospered. 
uh, and uh, uh, when I started uh, at the company, uh, it was about 50 folks, and when I left, it was about 800. Uh, we had grown a lot, uh, um, and uh, and then I had the opportunity to spend a year um, pursuing studies. I, I had decided that I wanted to help my community. I wasn't thinking about running for office, quite frankly, but I, I was frustrated, as I have been for many decades, about the trajectory of our community. I think it's unacceptable that our peer cities used to be Chicago and Philadelphia, and now they're Louisville and uh, uh, Kansas City, uh, and I wanted to help. So I, I had a fellowship at Harvard. I, my wife and I spent most of 2016 in Cambridge. I studied state and local government almost exclusively, thinking I was going to start a not-for-profit. Uh, and while I was there, I started getting incoming about, uh, why don't you just come back and, and, do, and run for office? And so we went through a, a lengthy process of discernment to, to, to determine whether this was uh, something that we wanted to subject our, ourselves to. You know, with respect to your question about business people, McGraw, and political service, uh, you're right to ask that question because I think most business people, or many business people, don't appreciate the differences between running a government organization where you've got uh, systemic and appropriate checks and balances as opposed to a business where if you're CEO, you maybe have a little bit more uh, dexterity, shall we say. Uh, I get that totally. Uh, I've always been a collaborator, uh, used to having boards, uh, used to uh, building relationships with people. Uh, I think that's where the incumbent, uh, one of the places, one of a number where he has failed miserably. He can't maintain effective working relationships with people. Uh, witness the relationship with the county council and the fact that he's lost his own party uh, and the like. So I think I get those distinctions well and uh, am uniquely qualified to do this job. Last question for you, Mark Montavani wants to be uh, St. Louis County Executive, the primary August 7th. Uh, and I apologize up front for asking uh, this question. Have you ever cheated on your wife? No, I've not cheated on my wife. And I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's unfortunate that the media would uh, resort to that kind of question. Well, been, you I, understand why I'm asking the question. I understand why you're a asking the question. Uh, look, I've been married uh, for 40 years. I have uh, three uh, children, eight grandchildren. Uh, my wife and I were together for uh, six years before we were married. Uh, you know, we've been through uh, our lives together, and uh, uh, I am, I'm, I'm perfectly confident that uh, I can withstand the kind of scrutiny that uh, uh, others might, uh, might not be able to withstand. Mark Montavani, will you come back and talk to us before the primary? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. If we're going to talk about issues and uh, serious stuff, I'd, I'd welcome the opportunity. Well, we always do. But you understand, you understand the question. I mean, we got I a, totally pre we had a president, we have a governor, we got yeah. a, you know. I have been dedicated to the proposition that I'm not going to turn my political uh, uh, aspirations into a sideshow. And uh, there's too much of that, in my view. And, uh, and uh, were I not of that kind, this campaign would have a wholly different kind of orientation than it has had. Well, we've also spent, you know, 15 minutes talking about issues. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah. I agree. All right. Um, Thanks. Thank you.